I briefly mentioned gyroscopes when we were talking about uh, aerodynamics and left turning tendencies. And gyroscopes have two main properties associated with them. Well, first of all, gyroscopes are fast spinning discs. So let's talk about a bike wheel. And so if you get a bike wheel spinning fast enough, it will have what we call rigidity in space, meaning it will want to keep spinning in that same direction, in that same plane of rotation. So it'll keep wanting to stay this way. Now, the other thing is uh, precession, or when you apply a force, it gets felt 90 degrees forward of the rotation. So if you've ever ridden a bike, you know that you can just lean a little bit and the bike will turn. And the reason that happens is because you apply a force to the top of the wheel, it gets translated 90 degrees forward and the front of the wheel turns. And so those two principles are the main principles of gyroscopes and they're why some of the instruments that we have can actually work. Our first instrument is the attitude indicator. And the attitude indicator is the artificial horizon. It will show you your bank and your pitch. And on the top, you'll notice little marks, and those are in tens of degrees. So you have 10, 20, 30, and then you have, some of them have 45, some of them have 60. And we also have pitch up and down. Depending on the attitude indicator, you might see 2.5, 5, 10, 15 degrees, or you might just see 5, 10, pitch up and down. And so this basically represents what your airplane looks like from behind. The inside of the attitude indicator has a gyroscope in it and it has vanes on the actual wheel and they catch the air passing over them and spin the gyroscope really really fast and that helps it stay in one uh, plane of rotation. So in the attitude indicator the gyroscope ends up staying horizontal and the airplane ends up rotating around it and as it does it will show that information on your attitude indicator. The heading indicator works in a very similar way. We have a gyroscope and it also gets spun by fast moving air and it spins in the vertical plane. Because of precession, your heading indicator will tend to get out of sync a little bit as time goes on. So the book recommends between 15 and 30 minutes uh, to check the heading versus your compass and make sure that they line up and they're pointing in the same direction. What I found is depending on the heading indicator, the actual instrument itself, you know, how old it is, how often it's serviced, um, some of them are really good at keeping directions, some of them are not so good. So depending on the airplane you fly, you might need to check it really often or maybe almost never because uh, it's a brand new instrument. So just make sure you're double checking, make sure it's pointing you in the right direction. Both the heading and attitude indicators depend on a vacuum pump and that provides air pressure to spin both the gyroscopes. So when you're doing your run up, what you're checking is when you're looking at that suction gauge, you're checking to make sure that you actually have enough pressure to power both of your gyroscopic instruments. The turn coordinator is another gyroscopic instrument, but this one is powered by the electrical system of the airplane. So if we take a look inside, you'll see that it's a gyroscope, but this one looks a little different, and that's because it's powered by an electric motor inside the instrument, and that's powered by the electrical system of the airplane. If the vacuum pump that powers the gyroscopes for the heading and attitude indicator were to fail, you have a backup now with the electric turn coordinator. Now the turn coordinator doesn't seem to have that much information on it, but it does have enough to keep you flying. We did talk about the inclinometer or the ball part of the turn coordinator, and that shows how coordinated your flight is. Now if the ball is inside or outside, we call that either skidding or slipping, depending on uh, where it is in the turn. Let's say you're in a right-hand turn and the ball is on the inside of the turn, we call that a slipping turn because the nose isn't going as fast as it should to keep up with the rate of turn. If the ball is on the outside, we call that a skidding turn. Now the airplane part of the turn coordinator shows you your rate of turn. It does not show you your bank angle. It doesn't show you how many degrees of bank you are banking, if that makes any sense. Your turn coordinator shows you the rate of turn, and the little tick mark at the bottom shows what a standard turn rate is. That happens to be 3 degrees per second. In other words, if you turn and you hold the airplane on that tick mark, you'll make a 360 degree turn in two minutes. So it shows your rate of turn and not your angle of bank. And I know that might sound a little bit confusing, but it will make a little bit more sense once you start flying by instruments. The goal of these different instruments is to provide redundancy and safety. So we have the pedostatic system, the gyroscopic system, and then the electric turn coordinator and all those are to provide redundancy. For example, if you were to lose your vacuum pump, you wouldn't have heading or attitude, 
but you could determine your heading with your compass and you could also determine your attitude with an altimeter, vertical speed, your airspeed, and your turret coordinator. And so it isolates the problem, but you can still fly the airplane with uh, a lot of the other instruments that you have. And so that's basically why we have three different types of instruments, uh, is so that there's redundancy and there's backup just in case. There are other instruments that we haven't covered, things like RPM gauges and oil pressures and temperatures, but those are coming up when we talk about airplane systems. If you are flying a technically advanced airplane or you want to learn about one, I would suggest the chapter linked in the, in the description box below on flight instruments and that will talk about PFDs and MFDs and electronic flight displays and all the information we talked about still applies. They're still using the pedostatic source. The information is just presented differently on a screen instead of six gauges that we mentioned. And so I would recommend reading the chapter. If you do have questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll uh, try to get to them. In the meantime, have fun, fly safe, and always keep learning. See you next time.